Are you frustrated with your MIG welds and you're not sure how to make them better? You try turning some dials maybe and thinking that might help and it just doesn't? So if you're super frustrated, you came to the right place because I know your frustration because I've been there and I know exactly what it's like to be lost, not sure what to do next to make your welds look better. So make sure to stick around because this is a three part series that we're gonna go over setup, settings, and technique. And you need all three of those things to make good MIG welds. And the reason why you need all three of these things is because let's say you have the best machine and the best setup that you have, but you don't have the right technique or you don't have the right settings. There is nothing you can do to make good MIG welds, even though you have the best machine possible and the best setup. And the opposite is true. You can have the best technique, you can have the best settings, and you can really know what you're doing. But if this machine ain't set up right, there is no technique or setting that's gonna make up for a bad setup. So in part one here, I'm just gonna go over basic MIG machine setup. And because this is like the basic foundation of all these three things, because if you don't have this right, there's no technique or setting that's gonna make up for that. And there's, there's just nothing you can do to get a good weld if your machine isn't set up right. Now compared to other welding processes, MIG welding has the most amount of moving parts. So it's a little more things you gotta keep track of, but we're not building a rocket here. So just follow along step-by-step step here and we'll make it really simple for you. All right, so this is what it looks like with the roll of wire pulled out of it and the lead pulled out of it, everything kind of stripped off this machine. And I just kind of have it, the lead actually just laid on the ground over here and the parts kind of taken apart just so you can see kind of what goes where and, and how it all goes together here. So when it comes to parts of this gun and consumables that you should be concerned about, it's really only these two that really wear out the most. So here you got the contact tip and then here you got the nozzle. And this part is the one that goes into the welder here. And you can see right here, those little holes that are kind of through it. That's where your gas goes into the liner and then goes through your lead and then up to your gun. So make sure that part of the lead is inserted fully into the welder so then the gas can flow into those holes and out into your gun. And a big problem that I've had happen to me before is this, this guy is just not fully seated in there and it's just so annoying because you just can't figure out why there's no gas going to your gun. It's so frustrating and all you really gotta do is just loosen this guy up a little bit and just push it in a little bit further so the gas goes through those holes. Well, that's just something that happened to me that was super frustrating so just make sure you double check that and make sure it's in there good. So after you have that fully seated in there and you crank down on this little nut that secures it in place, there's usually some sort of plug that comes off of that that plugs into the welder. This one's pretty easy, it's right on the front here and you just you just push it in there and turn it to lock it in and your lead is all hooked up. Now as far as gas goes for MIG welding, it all depends on what wire you're using. In this case we're using 70S6 steel wire and in most cases for steel MIG welding, that's what you usually use. And the gas you use with that wire is 75% argon mixed with 25% CO2 or just 75-25. You can get this at your local welding supply. After that's all good, you just gotta install your regulator on your bottle and run your hose from your regulator into your machine. And as far as CFH wise, I usually run around 20, 25 for most average conditions. Now, if you're running like where it's windy or outside somewhere, you might have to crank it up a little bit to get some more gas flow. But for the most part, 20, 25 CFH is usually pretty good. So this is when it can become a little more confusing because this guy here, sometimes it's right-handed threads, sometimes it's left-handed threads. In this case, it's left-handed threads. So we're just gonna just unscrew this guy off like that. Another thing that kind of differs from each machine is that the way the wire feeds off the roll and into your liner. So, so like here, the liner is kind of more pointed straight to where the roll's at. Some of them come off at an angle like that. And then when you have your roll on here, you need to feed your wire through a little bit differently. So basically, there's two ways you can have your wire fed on this thing. You can either have it fed where the wire is coming off and looping down low like this, or you can flip that, flip this roll around, and now the wire will be feeding out the top and going through. So that all kind of depends on what machine you have because the way this is angled is how you install this roll of wire. And most of the times it's pretty common sense. So like, I wouldn't want to feed it where, <laughs> 
I just wouldn't want to feed it to where the wire is coming off like that because it's the way it's coming off, it's going to have to make a super hard angle to come down and then into the liner. So it just makes sense to have this roll flipped around to where it just comes straight off the bottom of the roll and goes right kind of yeah, right off the bottom and just goes right into the liner. So it just, it can really only be put on one way. I mean, you can put it on the other way, but it's just, it's just not going to make any sense for it to make some crazy angle to come down and into the liner. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're installing rolls like this, just to make sure that you're installing it to have the wire come off the right direction. So once we have the roll just slid on like that, we'll take our little nut guy on the end here and we'll just kind of just, just gently thread this on here. Just gently like that. We're not going to create, we're just going to just, just put it on there just so the roll stays against. Now before we feed this wire through, we got to figure out what size wire we're running to match the size drive roller that's on here. So, in this case, these drive rollers usually have two slots, usually for two different size wires. Usually you always want the size that you're using facing out towards you. So if I can read it here on this face, like I'm using 023 wire here, I think. Yeah, 023. So this is 024, so 024, 023, man, they're pretty much the same. So since we're using this 024 side, we're just gonna make sure that is the side that's facing out towards us. So we just gotta make sure we can read that. So we'll slide this on like this. And the way these rollers go on here too, kind of differs from machine. But yeah, these guys, this, this was just kind of like a quick, you push it in, turn it and it pops out. So it kind of has like these little, little X groove here, push it in, turn it and it locks it. So now that we got our drive roller installed on the right way and we're using the right groove for the right size wire that we're using, now we can feed our wire through. Now you always want to keep tension on this guy so it doesn't uncoil because that could be a real mess. So now, see how this like gnarly bend in the wire from being hooked on this, this little hole here? We're just going to clip this guy off like this. Clip that off. So now we have a straight, clean piece of wire that doesn't have any bends or kinks in it. And that is super key when you're feeding this through here because if the wire has any sort of bend or kink in it, it's just not gonna feed right through the liner of the gun and you're just gonna run into a lot of issues. So always make sure you have a, just a clean, straight piece of wire when you feed this through here. So we're gonna feed it through this outer guide here. This kind of sets it up to where it shoots it onto the right roller. And as we'll feed it through, probably I don't know if you can see that or not. But now our wire is here. If you can see that. Then you gotta fish it into the liner of the gun. So it's like a little tiny hole that starts right here. So you can just fish it through that. So now we got this started into the liner here. You just gotta get it started. You don't gotta feed the whole way up. We'll, we'll let the machine do all the work for that. So once you just get it started in here, flip this guy down, and then lock it in with this. Now this is your wire tension right here. This determines how much pressure is being pushed on that wire so this dry roller can grip it and feed it through the liner. Usually you don't want crazy amount of tension on it, well, you don't want too little tension either because then it's not going to grip that wire good and feed it through the liner. So there's a happy medium in there that you just kind of adjust your little turn dial here to find that happy medium. Now, a lot of times some machines have like a chart or something here that tells you how much tension you should put on for different size wires, different types of wires, like some it's different for steel or aluminum or stainless steel wire. So it all kind of depends on the wire you're using. But if it doesn't have a chart like that, like this does here, we're just going to do it the old school way and just do it by feel. So before we do that, we just got to get our roll tightened up here. And that's another thing too. You don't need that crazy tight. Some of these have like a spring on this outer nut here that puts tension on this roll. So in this case, it doesn't really have a spring. So you just tighten up. So 
basically the point of that is when you start and stop feeding with your gun when you're mig welding this roll stops and starts all the time and so if it stops and starts and this thing coasts back and forth it's going to give you an inconsistent wire feed because it's coasting forward and back every time you stop and start so to eliminate that coasting of this roll back and forth just tighten this guy up all right so next we'll just focus on getting our wire tension set right what i'm going to start off doing here is start stretching out this lead here so there's no tight bends in it so the wire can freely travel through it. So now that we got the lead stretched out, I'm going to turn on the machine here. Now to start us off, I have the tension set all the way down here. So you can see here how the drive roller is spinning, but the wire isn't feeding through consistently. So that means we need to crank up the tension a little bit. So I keep doing this going back and forth with pressing the trigger on and off and watching the drive roller to make sure it's not slipping at all. And every time I just adjust it up a little bit more and a little bit more and keep doing that until there is no delay at all with feeding. You can also see here that my roll tension isn't tight enough either because you can see that the roll of wire is coasting yet. So I got to tighten that up a little bit here. So this is what it looks like when you have your roll tension and wire tension adjusted right. When you hit that trigger on the gun, everything should move together with no feeding delay and no coasting of the roll of wire. So now that we got our tensions all right and everything's feeding good, we can now feed it the rest of the way all the way up to our gun. Now a key thing here is that I like to do is remove the contact tip and nozzle from the gun so the wire can travel out the gun freely and not get caught on anything. Now a little trick here is you can just crank up your wire speed here so you're not waiting forever for the wire to come out of the gun. Now that you got your wire fed all the way out, you can install your contact tip on your gun first and make sure it's the same size as the wire size you have installed on the machine. So in this case, I'm running O23 wire in the machine. So then I need to make sure I have an O23 contact tip to install on the gun. Once you have that done, you can just throw on your nozzle and you're all ready to go. So that was a lot of info and different steps to keep track of. So what I did to make your life a little easier is made an absolutely free MIG welder setup guide. So it takes all the guesswork out of setting up your machine. Pair this guide with this video I just made to make sure you don't miss out on any steps of the setup process. Just hit up the description of this video to get access to the link for your free MIG welder setup guide. So now that you got your machine all set up right, this is a great starting point, but this is only step one of three, like I said in the beginning of the video. So make sure to stick around for part two. Now in part two, I'm gonna be going over all these settings. So this is a big, big question I get all the time. What should I have this machine set at so I get good welds? And I go, I'm gonna go over all that in part two. So make sure to stick around. So with that being said, hope you liked the video and as always, if you have any questions on any part of the video, just drop those in the comments below. And if there's anything in this video that you want me to cover in more detail, like if your machine looks a little bit different than this machine and you're just not sure how to set it up right, just drop those in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. So with that being said, hope you liked the video and we'll see you in part two.